Within the 3D printing DIY community, there's not really been any great way to protect yourself from a power outage. Maybe it's a brownout, maybe it lasts for longer. But the only real solution we've had is a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply. Prusa Research have a new solution, a very interesting one, called Power Panic. An interesting name given the reduced panicking that it should cause, but an interesting solution nonetheless. In this video, I'm going to take you through how it works, how to test it, and answer one simple question. Does it save you from a power outage? Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Prusa i3 Mark III features, well specifically power panic. The idea is that when power is lost, the printer knows about it and it can react to that situation, saving its position, the temperatures and all that sort of stuff so that when the power comes back, it can carry on with the print. To be clear, I don't know exactly how it works. This is my best guess, but I'm pretty sure it's a pretty good guess. Let's take a look. Firstly, there's an additional pair of leads from the power supply. And these go to the control board and feed information about the presence of power input to the power supply. Basically, it's a mains sensor. When that information reaches the control board, a few things happen. And remember, when the power goes down, the printer doesn't know exactly how long it has. All it knows is that sometime in the near future, it's gonna be losing power. So yes, it does a couple of things, a hardware switch and some actions within the firmware. To the best of my knowledge, the firmware tries to do three things. Firstly, it saves information about the current print to the EEPROM. This is something like the extruder temperature, the bed temperature, the X, Y, and Z positions, and probably some other bits of data that I don't know the exact list of. The second thing it tries to do is move the Z axis up. By moving the nozzle away from the print, that hot part is not gonna leave a big multi-splodge on your print. Nobody wants to recover a print if it's got a big multi-splodge on it. The third thing it tries to do is move the x-axis towards the home position, just to get that hot nozzle away from your printed part. While that's all going on on the firmware, the hardware switch turns off the heated bed and the hot end in order to basically conserve power. Remember, there is no battery in this printer. The only available energy it has once the power has been turned off is that stored in the capacitors on the power supply. As a result, the more energy you can save by not powering things like the heated bed and the hot end, the more you have available to do the other important things like saving the data and moving the hot end. When the power comes back on, there are two things that might happen. And this is gonna be based on the temperature of the hot end and the heated bed. If they're hot enough, as in close to the saved values, then it will heat up and carry on printing. But if your power outage has lasted a significant period of time, then they will have cooled down quite a lot. And so things like ABS probably won't be sticking anymore. So the printer gives you a little message that says, there was a blackout, do you wish to resume printing? At this point, you can choose to resume or not. Now you know how it works, how do you go about testing it? There are three ways to remove power from your printer. You can turn off the switch, you can pull the plug out, or you can turn it off at the wall. If you want power panic to trigger, you need to use one of the last two. Removing the mains from the printer. Turning it off using the switch will not trigger power panic. Power panic is designed to recover after power loss. Turning it off using the switch is seen as a human interaction and therefore not accidental and therefore not intended to have any recovery measures. Turning the printer off directly at the wall most closely simulates having a power outage to the house or building and therefore is probably the best way to test power panic. To evaluate how well it works, let's ask a couple of questions. Firstly, will it replace a UPS? Well, this is probably going to depend, I think, on your situation. If your power loss situations are normally short, so a brownout where everything goes off and sort of not immediately back on, but only a few seconds, then power panic is gonna really help. UPS is an expensive solution, and for a few seconds, it's a little bit overkill. However, if the power loss that you're seeing is normally for a few hours, then I think you're still gonna be in a little bit of a bad situation. A UPS will help a lot, but I don't think power panic is gonna help because once your print cools down, it's gonna be much more difficult to recover that print unless it's something like PLA, which is quite happy just sitting there cold and stuck to the bed. The second question is, does it always work? Can you guarantee that power panic will save your print? Well, yes and no. 
Currently, the beta firmware is not the best, meaning it doesn't really work. The Z high ends up too low during the recovery process, and sometimes it might just keep skipping on that dried and hard print, and so it just keeps rehoming and trying again and trying again, and it just doesn't continue the print really at all. If it does continue the print, you'll end up with a significant scar because of that drop in Z height and the mist glare and all this sorts of malarkey and it doesn't really look very good. So that brings me on to my third question then. If it isn't perfect, is there any point? Bit of a difficult one this. I mean, at the moment, the beta firmware does have some problems and that scarring does leave a significant problem on the print. If you're building aesthetic pieces and maybe you can sand it out, then it's not so bad. But if you're building mechanical pieces that end up with misalignment or holes in the wrong place, then that's going to be a bit more of a problem for you. The last question is, does it damage the EEPROM? As I mentioned earlier, during the power panic procedure, data is saved to the EEPROM. EEPROM has a limited number of write cycles, meaning you can only save data a set number of times before it's damaged permanently and can no longer be used. Fortunately, the number of write cycles is probably in the region of about 100,000. That's quite a lot of power losses. In fact, if you had a power loss every single day of the year, 365 days of the year, you could still print non-stop for 273 years. So that's been the original Prusa i3 Mark III's power panic feature. If you want to see more videos about the Prusa i3 Mark III special features, like the filament sensor and the bendy bed, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully that was a lot of information that was useful to you, especially if you're going to be buying a Mark III in the future, or considering one at least. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.